Are you looking to buy a Ford Fiesta automatic? Well, if you are, watch this video first. This is Pete Harris from Ashton's Cars here, and today I am showing you around a 59 plate Ford Fiesta. It's the 1.4 litre titanium model, five door. As you can see, it's in a very fetching colour um, of lime green. I like this colour personally, I think it really stands out from the crowd. But what I'm here to especially talk to you about, as well as showing you some of the features of this particular car, is the reason that this is the model and year of Fiesta Automatic I would recommend. So it's a 59 plate, that means it's the newer shape Fiesta. They changed over at the end of 2008. Um, but it has the 1.4 litre four cylinder engine mated to a proper automatic. It's a four speed auto slush box. Um, this car was made before they started putting EcoBoost engines in them and before they started putting the power shift transmission onto these cars. Now, I'm not a very, well, I'm not a fan at all of the EcoBoost one litre engines in these cars. It's got a wet belt, it does have issues, so much so that we have nicknamed them in the trade, the Eco Boom, because they have got a habit of going boom and Ford did a recall on many of these cars and had to pay out quite a lot of money. Um, that's the cars though that came later on the 59 plates have got a four cylinder, normally aspirated engine, and it's a very, very good engine indeed. Very uh, reliable and easy to repair if it needs anything doing. Also, later models of Fiesta were fitted with what they call the, um, the power shift gearbox. Um, they're not very good either. They're a semi-automatic, and, and they're so bad that we've actually nicknamed them the power shift you probably gather what we've nicknamed them in the trade um basically guys if you're in the know these earlier new shape fiesta automatics are the best ones they're the most reliable they've got the best gearbox the only reason that ford changed the gearbox on these was to make it a cheaper manufacturing process because as you've probably know from reading the news the fiestas were not being sold at a profit uh, which is why ford have now discontinued them altogether these cars really good quality little car um but ford was not able to shift them even towards the end they were selling these for twenty thousand pound plus but even then they were apparently not making a profit on them so ford has now stopped making the fiesta but the later models than this have got a pretty ropey engine and gearbox combination that i really would strongly stay stay away from um right so sorry that was a bit of a rant at you almost but what I'm saying is 59 plate Fiestas like the one I've got here are among the best Fiestas ever built and um, in the case of this one it's a titanium model which means it's got a very very high specification and it's got the proper automatic gearbox which is obviously very very desirable on these cars small automatics always are highly desired cars um, I'll take you through some of the spec this one's got um, as we go around it Hopefully you can see from the, the overall condition of it, as far as 14-year-old small cars go, it's very, very good. It has got front and rear parking sensors, this car, um, which is obviously one of the reasons it's probably managed to save from any nicks and bumps in the, in the paintwork on it. A little bit of stone chipping on the Ford badge there. I'm sure we can probably get a new Ford badge fitted, though. That's not going to be a problem. And a little bit of curbing on the alloy wheels, but... I do tend to expect that on a car of this age, especially a small car that would have been used for going shopping, etc., by the previous owner. It's quite low mileage. Um, off the top of my head, I think it's done about 65,000. We'll confirm that in a minute when I get inside the car and start it up for you. It's got quite a lot of little extras that I love on these cars, including this button here locks the doors, which is quite cool. You press the button, the mirrors fold in. It's uh, very very desirable indeed that is in on a car like this it's keyless go as well you've got a push button inside sensors to the back as well they're not color coded on this car you'll notice that is how they came from the factory though very small little mark by here looks like they've opened the tailgate onto a garage door or something like that but nothing uh, nothing too untoward there good tires all around and it has to be said, very good condition. I mean, it really does pop at you, this colour. It's quite a dull day here at the moment, but uh, in the sunshine, it really does pop out, this colour. And um, I, I personally love it. It's a nice nice sort of alternative from the, uh, the more boring silvers and greys that you see these in normally. 
front fog lights again titanium specs so you get the chrome bevels on those uh, front fog lights and you also get chrome along the uh, side flanks there it has also as you will see a chrome surround on the grill and that's something that is specific to the titanium model as well so lesser models have not got that chrome and that's how you tell a titanium uh, when it's coming up behind you let's have a quick look into the back of this car I've got the front seat right back at the minute, so I'm probably killing the legroom. They are actually more spacious than it probably looks here because I've got my seat a bit too far back just so I can demo the front. But uh, you've got Isofix uh, seat points on the car. It's very, very clean and tidy. It doesn't look like this back seat's had a lot of wear whatsoever. And if we go to the front, you'll again see very clean upholstery, no wear on these um, bolsters which is very important on a car of this age 67,000 miles the car has done but what i really want to show you is the features just inside it so let's do that so first of all this is the gearbox you want if it says power shift on it it's not this one the power shift is a semi-auto it's a lot more jerky it doesn't have the same record for reliability as this traditional automatic so this is the one you want with the non-power shift and this manual up and down here um, so very very reliable gearbox you will know the difference when you drive the two cars because the power shift is a semi-auto that makes it a bit lumpy and a bit jerky this is a proper old slush box so it just sort of the changes are sort of soothing and, and quite nice you don't really know you're changing through the gears so dashboard layout well it's a fiesta so hopefully um a lot of you will have been in a fiesta everyone's apparently owned a fiesta at some point in their lives um it's a good layout these latter shaped ones are really really nice indeed you've got what's called a sync system for the phone so you can play your music through it and you can um have bluetooth telephone calls come through you've also got uh on this particular car uh, a dab stereo we've got climate controlled air conditioning on it um, which is down here so it's a digital climate control the aircon blows it ice cold on it and we've also got usb connectivity uh, for your music or whatever if you don't want to use the bluetooth system so very modern system considering it's a uh, a nearly 14 year old car it's got a lot of kits because not many small cars had bluetooth uh, back in 2009 and not many small cars have got cruise control, but this one has. So we've got cruise here on the right-hand side of the steering wheel. That works an absolute treat. Uh, I drove this car over 200 miles myself personally, and I was using the cruise control most of the way. Um, so that was an absolute godsend. An automatic with cruise is, of course, one of the most relaxing driving experiences you'll have. And this Fiesta is one of the nicest uh, driving experiences you will have in a, a small car, in my opinion. To start it up, we simply put our foot on the brake and press the power button by here. And she's now on. You probably can't hear that. Uh, it's a very quiet engine on it. I'll give it a quick rev though. Just so you can hopefully see that it is on. Um, nice simple design to the dashboard with the display there. It tells you how many miles you got left in the tank, which is quite nice. That light's not flashing if it does look like it's flashing on your display. It's purely by recording equipment for some reason makes it look that way. Uh, in the middle here we have got, again it might look like it's flickering but it's not, it tells you your radio station, you can also um, use it for your phone and stuff like that so I can put my phone up on there and dial through numbers and using this little button by here. It's really simple to use and you can also have voice command on here, I don't know if you can see that, if I press this button by here. radio on radio. yeah it then puts the radio on for me wonderful fm frequency please 89.9 to 89.9 should be radio 2 there we go radio 2 has now come on Thank you, so there you go um <laughs> Not many small cars have got that feature either. It's essentially, guys, really high spec in here. And um, I'm just gonna put the aircon on because I'm getting a little bit hot. There we go. 
that's ice cold. Everything in here works as it should. As I say, if it looks like some of the lights and controls are flickering on it, it's actually our recording equipment makes it look like that. It's not the car itself. Um, to show you a bit more, I will need to get outside. So let's just press the power button once more. That switches everything off. I'll grab my keys this time. Because when I'm outside the car, I'm then able to press the button by here and it's locked. How fantastic is that? And just by simply grabbing the door handle again, oh, pressing the button again, sorry, wrong car, it unlocks. I'll do it one more time just to show you it's me, not the car that was messing up then. Locked. Unlocked. Very easy to use. Essentially means you can have the, the, your bunch of keys in your bag, in your pocket, wherever, attached to your belt loop. You don't need to actually physically get a key out to get in this car or start it. Of course, if you try and get in the car without the keys on your person, it will not open, it will not start. It's got a transponder in it, so it's a very clever design. Personally, I think this is one of the smartest buys in this sector. If you're looking for an automatic, and obviously there are many people out there I get asked all the time for small autos, and we very rarely get them because they're so hard to come by because I point blank refuse to try and sell these semi-automatic gearboxes. They're just an absolute nightmare in my opinion. They also uh, give me anxiety with the warranty because they're prone to going wrong. Proper little automatics like this, uh, are very very sought after and very hard to come by so if you are looking for one please give me a call i have got this car in stock at the moment it's going to be available for nationwide delivery uh, we're happy to take your old car in part exchange and my number is 07932 873 646 so pick up the phone give me a ring i hope that you also find this video useful even if it's you're looking at this in three years time and looking to buy a car like this because hopefully it highlights a few of the things that you need to be looking for in small automatics, i.e. don't buy a semi-auto. And also, if you can, stay away from the, uh, the EcoBoost engine, the one litre EcoBoost in the Fiestas, because it can be problematic. Um, so that's my advice. Um, my number one more time is 07932 873 646 please give us a like please give us a share and most importantly please subscribe to our channel if you've not done so already because doing so means that i'm able to carry on making this content and i hope it's been useful but thanks very much for watching it's now time for me to go goodbye for now